Hey guys, Shaber 1000 here. Today, we're going to pull the engine off of this twin track 2000. Stick with me, let's do this together. Okay guys, so the first thing, of course, I want to unhook all the wiring. Um, I'm going to have to unhook the starter, which should be down in there. But the first thing i got to do is pull this side off. I was looking, I got this bolt here, but one of the weld nuts, this is kind of like a weld nut. Well, where is it at? Like right here. It's kind of like a weld nut, but it's not technically welded. Um, they get to spinning. This whole thing will spin. That's what's wrong with that one there. So I'll have to get on it with a pair of ice grips to pull that out. I got two more up in here. And then I should be able to pull this, this side cover off. And this is the way the engine is going to come out is this way. There should be four bolts underneath that hold the engine on itself. So first, I'm going to try to get this off of here. If the bolts break, I'm not real concerned about it because these I can just put regular bolts in it because I do have enough room to put a nut on it. So I'm going to back you up here a little bit and uh, I'm going to take this one off first because it's going to be a pain in the ass. So uh, then I'll just fast forward through everything. Okay, this is what I used. Okay, so I don't have to take them other two out. All right. I thought there was two more up in there, but. So anyway, there's that. That thing was spinning right there. I'll show you. This was just spinning inside there, so. That's why I had to hold it with the vice grips. Alright, so there's the engine. So I may have to get up under there to get to the starter. I'm not sure. I blow all this stuff out. Uh, these were pretty good, pretty good engines. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see if we can make this a good engine again soon. So let me uh let me get all this stuff unhooked. I'm not going to bore you with that. It's just unplugging a couple wires and, you know, the fuel line. It's no big deal. I'm just going to have to take the fuel line off here. So, you didn't see that right here. And then, uh, then we'll go from there. Eventually, I'm going to have to take all this stuff off. But I want to get this engine off and get it in on my bench. So, hang tight, guys, and I'll be back with you. Okay, guys. I got everything unhooked. All I had to do was unhook the choke throttle and two wires. I got the four bolts out from underneath there. And this is what what came off. Not good. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to weld that. Uh, that's one of the tabs for the motor for the motor mount on the bottom of the block. And I'm thinking it may be aluminum. I'm not sure I'll have to see, but we'll have to burn that bridge when we get to it. I gotta hurry up, monkey's on her way. If she sees me doing this, I will get in all kinds of trouble. So. Probably should have took the exhaust off, but I didn't. So the other, the other motor mounts look pretty good. Uh, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I want to get all the grime off of it. I broke that trying to get that off. Whoops, that. But it's no big deal. Um, 
<coughs> There's two of the motor mount tabs. And that one's okay. This one's the one that's broke off, so I don't know how well that's picking it up. Anyway, it's broke off there. See, it's supposed to look like this one. So, alright. Now, I gotta get my bolts picked up and get this stuff blown out of here, swept out of here or something. And then we'll, uh, I'll carry it in we'll put it up on the bench. I don't know if I'm going to take it apart today, but we're going to we're going to see. I don't know if I got time or not. Uh, I mean, I should have plenty of time. It might be a late night shop night. But anyway, there we are. The motor is out of it. Like I said, it looks like a just looks like a Volkswagen engine, only two cylinders instead of four. It's pretty much set up kind of the same way, actually. These this is an opposed twin, it's not a V-twin. Alright. Let me get that stuff blown out of here and see what I can blow off of that thing, and then we'll take it in, set it up on the bench. Alright, we got it in here. Now listen guys. If monkey asks, Bruno helped me with this, okay? Because I'm not supposed to lift things of that nature. Well, I'm not supposed to lift anything more than five pounds, which is about that thing. So, I guess I'm going to drain the oil out and uh, give me a plug. Yeah, there's a plug right there. I'll run it down on, down into my pan on the ground, or not on the ground, but in the pan on the ground, and uh, this will be the first engine we we rebuilt on here. So, and then uh, you know, I'll just bring us over to the edge. I got a pan out there. I'll put down. We'll drain all the oil out of it. Let it drain for a couple hours. Then, we'll probably flip it up onto that side right there. Screwing up my bench, but that's okay. It's what it's here for. It's actually a desk, you know, it's just a desk. So, I got it from work. They gave it to me. And then we'll pull the, we'll pull the sump off of it, or oil pan, whichever you prefer. There's no right or wrong way to say that. No matter what anybody says, it's it's an oil pan, really. So, but I was gonna, what I was gonna do was I was gonna pull this off, this pulley off, and take this off here and just look inside. But since I can't get the pulley off right now, well, I'll be able to once uh, once I get my puller set out. It's over in my toolbox. Uh, so we'll. Uh, That's what we're going to do, guys. So I don't know if this this piston's moving in or out or not, but okay. Let me get my oil pan, get it set down there. Let's start draining some oil. All right, I got my little fan running over there because it's pretty hot in this garage. Um, so while we got it up here, while that's draining. We're going to go ahead and pull this head off of here and check. I'll try not to get in your way, but um, if it happens, it happens. Maybe I can get you over this way. Maybe that'll help. Okay. So let's go ahead and pull this off of here. This is just a shroud. A lot of guys, when they work on something, they like to cut corners and uh, then put them shrouds back on. You don't want to do that, guys, because uh, there's a there's it's got to circulate. There should be like on the flywheel. There's fins like a fan, and that circulates your air past these past these uh, fins right here. Okay take that off and it can't get the air that it needs to get 
so therefore it will overheat on you and uh, that does cause some issues so I love this little set just from Harbor Freight but the only thing I don't like about it is the magnets will come out after a little bit and you got to try to glue them back in the best thing to do if you got a magnet coming out don't try to glue it you're wasting your time it last for a little bit but they're very strong magnets if it comes starts coming out on you put a little epoxy on it okay so there's that there's that so i'm just gonna put this bolt back in here i think the other one was broke off on the other side but let's go ahead and pull this head off of here And we'll see what the valves look like on this side and see if this piston's moving. I gotta try to be careful because I broke one off on the other side. I think I can get it out because it was moving back and forth. So I don't think I'll have an issue getting it out. keep doing that until you get it out. Alright, I'm going to leave one of these in. Just for now. got it it pulled a little when I say it, it's pulling threads that's what I'm talking about right there so it's no big deal on these if I would happen to have to drill one out you can put what they call a helicoil in there or if it's not super duper bad you can um, oh big palmetto bug in there if they're not super duper bad can re you can drill it out a little bit bigger and put you a little better bolt in it okay so let's see if this piston moves yes this piston is moving so that means the rod's good so if you look at all that gook and shit in there where was that coming from okay all that up there uh, let's see if these will turn the other side turns these should turn that one's not wanting to turn. It's stuck. This one's stuck. No, it ain't. Okay. See, that's the way they're supposed to turn like that. And if they don't, you got to try to get them to turn. Sometimes you got to see that's stuck. Uh, let's see here. Where's my little hand crack? Plastic camera here. I don't recommend you doing that because you can bend the valve real easy. But I've done a bunch of these. I've been fortunate enough not to bend any, and if I did, it still ran pretty good. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some oil down in there. I may have to have to pull the exhaust the exhaust manifold off, the intake manifold off. And right right under here is um, your uh, like your valve covers, okay? You pull them off, that's where your valve springs set. So all right. But at least this piston's moving in and out, but man, that that doesn't look good, does it? What we got to do, either way, I'm take, it's going to come out because I'm going to go ahead and hone these cylinders and I'll put new rings in it. 
if it's worth honing. I've seen guys hone these before with the piston still in it. But since I'm putting new rings in it, I might as well, uh, it's going to be out good then. It's real rough right there. So hopefully that will come out with a hone. Uh, I'll show you what a hone looks like. This is what a cylinder hone looks like. Um, and it's not going to be big enough. So I'll have to get a bigger one. But that's what it looks like. They also make different kinds of ball hones. Uh, just different kinds of them. But So I'll have to get a bigger one. Probably have to get a bigger one for Monkey's tractor too. So, Because we're going to be doing it too. But, so what we're going to do, <laughs> kind of anxious, let's get inside of here and see what it looks like if the rod snapped, if the rod cap came off. Uh, you know, I know it didn't like technically throw a rod that I can see. So, let's uh, get this flipped up. And we'll take the sump off see what we've got going on inside there okay so let me get everything ready I don't know what size these are should be four bolts nine sixteenths but anyway let me get everything set up for you guys and we'll take these out we'll take the sump off it's gonna be a mess but it is what it is right hang tight okay guys it actually says own on on the starter, so I don't know if that's original or if it's been replaced at one time with an actual own on starter. Uh, it's similar to a, a General Motor starter, Chevy or G GMC. Okay. Well, time to break out the big boys. Hang tight. As Musty always says, noise alert. This don't get it. We got one size bigger. Alright. It's time to break out Bertha. That big Bertha. Yeah, she'll do it. That looks like it's had water in it or something. That one's got a oil on it. Could just be metal going into aluminum, but sometimes water will also cause that. You see, it's like rust, but. take the shroud off but I think I can do it right here so hang tight this is a very important tool bush NA but works just fine to me okay. All right. well I had to charge this battery I believe it to be the first time since I've had this thing, so and I'm pretty sure I did a review on it. Ah, I can't get in there. Shoot. Well. Let's do this. Extensions for the men who like to get away from their job. One. There's two, just following the floor. You guys have seen this for the first time, just like me. Let me zoom you in a little bit. 
and I'll show you what we're looking at. Kato that rod. You guys see that? There's a rod cap. Kato. Uh, actually, that's catastrophic takeoff, but. Now it's time to look at the. Uh, I'll show you what we're looking at here. Oh. <clears throat> Shit. This is a crank journal. I see some scoring on it. I don't know how bad. This is the other the other rod. It's going to be coming out, of course. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to push this piston out. Okay, so let me get you on the pod. I'll get you over here. And we'll push that piston out of there. That monkey's camera all greasy. She's going to kick my ass. Zoom in a little bit there, a little bit tighter shot. Now, let me grab something. Push that, push that piston out with it. If I can. Uh, let's see. Probably need a long screwdriver. Okay, so it's going to need a piston too, guys. Man, that thing blew up, didn't it? Let me back you out again. So I'm going to need piston, rod, rings. I'll see if I can't get a kit. These are the rings. This is what we're going to be placing on monkeys. Re be replacing on monkeys tractor too. Uh, hopefully I can get by that cylinder look at that thing wow <sighs> shit yeah that thing yeah she blew up guys there's part of the rod hopefully Hopefully the crank journal's okay. If the crank journal's okay, we're gonna throw it together and run it. Uh, if it's not, then we're kind of we're kind of screwed up. But uh, that one's a little loose. It may have a knock in it. That could just be aluminum. I'll have to. I've got some um, acid, uh, muriatic acid. I'll soak that on there. I really didn't want to take that crank out of there. I may not have to, but yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, now we know what we need. We need a gasket set. We're gonna have to lap them valves. See that? Let's see if I can hold you steady. Looks like aluminum from the rod. But the first thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make sure that crank journal is not messed up. If it's not, if it's not worn too bad, I will I will throw a rod in it and we'll see what what happens. Uh, I don't want to put a whole bunch of money into it. Um, for that reason but I'll have to inspect it and see uh, this rod it's got in play which they have to have a little but it's gonna come out of there anyway and we'll, we'll check and see see what's going on with that but so there you guys go okay guys there it is tore down it threw a rod busted the piston up <laughs> yikes so 
I might see if I can find a, a used set put in there. I don't want to dump a bunch of money into this thing. I, I would like to keep it. I probably should do a rebuild, a complete rebuild on it. Uh, grind the valves. Uh, I, I, I think I can get by with just lapping the valves. But, you know, we'll just have to see see what that crank journal looks like once I get it cleaned up with some acid. Uh, what that does is eat the, uh, it eats that aluminum off of it. But it doesn't hurt the crank journal, but you don't want to leave it on there too long, just a minute or so. And it'll start eating it off there. And then you can neutralize it with baking soda. You rinse it out. Um, so I, these engines are like a thousand dollars. I'm not, you know, for a thousand dollars, I can, I'm, I'm pretty close to a brand new mower. Not this size, of course, but I just, uh, I just love doing this shit. I get it, get it together, get it running, and then I'll sell it to somebody. And, uh, I'll have to let them know, you know, well, I did throw a rod, but if I put a new rod in it, I'm not going to worry about it. I'll tell them it's been rebuilt. But I think a new rod and new piston, I think, will be fine as long as the, as long as the cylinder's not scored too bad. I think I'll be all right. I'll go ahead and pop that other one out, just two nuts on the end. And I'll pop it out just like I did this one, and I'll check check the uh, check the piston for see if it's scored. That way I'll be able to see the cylinder a lot better. Uh, yeah, that just uh, that just blew up. So. Yeah, just threw a rod. Uh, if that one valve wasn't sticking, it probably would have started on one cylinder and ran. So, which was the exhaust valve? Intake valve. Yeah, it was the intake valve that was sticking. Um, so anyway guys, thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out with me, thanks for putting this up on the bench so I don't get in trouble with Monkey. Uh, she's on her way back, so her and mom, they went to her mom's house to get some things and get the truck. Like I said, we just had it towed out here. Because, uh, didn't, don't have any, you know, the tags are expired and there's no insurance on it, so I really don't want to drive it that far. Uh, like that though we did drive the Sebring out here from well you Florida people from Bellevue um, it was pretty close to an hour and a half drive close to it from where we got the car and drove it clear out or new tags or nothing uh, so anyway uh, don't do that I, I don't recommend it but I can get a gasket set it'll come with with everything I need the head gaskets the sump gasket. Now, if you would have to pull that off there for some reason, just the sump, like, you know, to, to, to say, do something with, with the, uh, the pickup tube or whatever, um, can you use black RTV sealant? Yes, you can. On these things, yes, you can. Would I recommend it on a vehicle? No. This is a freaking lawnmower. It's a big lawnmower. It's industrial, but it's still a lawnmower. Um, the head gaskets, uh, just put new ones on it. Um, if it's just a push mower and you took it apart because of you had a sticky valve, you cleaned it up and stuff, and you want to reuse it again, use that, um, what's it called, Indian head. It's like a gasket sealer tack set. Put it back on and run it. It's a push mower. Um, go kart same way unless you got a very expensive go kart but if you just throw one together yeah just give it a little extra torque you know another inch pound or foot pound whatever they call for no biggie so yeah that's what I'm gonna do guys I'm just gonna I'm gonna go from there I'm gonna look up some parts and we'll see what they cost first uh, I know the gasket sets not very much it's 20 or 30 bucks but a piston rod and rings that's where it's gonna get expensive um, Hopefully I can find a set of two. 
uh, we'll have to see if I can find a set of two that's the route I'll go I'll put them both in if not I'll just get one um, I hate to put one new one in because see these don't have bearings in them okay they don't, if I had that one off I'd show you it's just kind of a thick aluminum soft aluminum that acts as your bearings it's called a babbit like the Babbitt motors, uh, you gearheads know what I'm talking about. There's no, there's no bearings in here, per se. So, shit monkeys here. So, all right, I'm gonna get off of here, and uh, so I'll have to mic it, make plast gauge it. If I do all that, I'll show you how to do it on the other one. See how much uh, movements there, you know, because uh, I hate to put it together and have this one start knocking, you know, and throw this rod. Anyway, guys, again, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Shea Bear, the myth, the man, legend. I'm gone for now. Monkey just backed in. I see her on the cameras there. She just pulled in. So, right up there. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right, we got the truck unloaded. I didn't bore you with that. You guys have seen that before, so... I guess she's old enough to smoke, right? <laughs> Alright, we got some other things to do, so hang tight, guys.